Okay, so now we are inside of Hero Player. So let's talk about this for a second. Now, Hero Player can open up uh, Hero Projects, Nuke Studio Projects, so we can open up the entire edit inside of here. Now, a big difference is when we select the clips, we're going to see that they're blue, and this means that it is read-only uh, as we are selecting them. Now, the idea behind here is we're not looking to do a conform. Uh, we're not looking to edit or add soft effects, so those items are locked off. We don't want to mess with the edit at all. We just want to be able to view it and view things in context, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So you can make some slight modifications to the project by adding clips from our project into a new track. And if that's the case, we're not going to be able to overwrite the save files of the actual edit itself or the Nuke Studio or Hero project. What we can do is save this as a player project. And then from there, uh, it's saved off as a separate uh, project in which we've made any of those modifications. So very handy for an artist that is uh, working with their shots, uh, working with continuity. They want to be able to save uh, what's happening and what they've built up so far. They can go ahead and save it as a player project. Now, another extremely important thing uh, that we've hit on a few times because I want to make sure that's an important point is that the artists can be using this to review their work. So just like we looked with the asset manager example before, artists can be doing the same thing inside of Hero Player. So from here, they can be going in and pulling the shots that they work on. So let's say that we're a lighting artist here and we've sent some shots over the farm. Uh, it was a Friday. We're back in on Monday and we want to begin to review those shots. Well, we can pull out that data uh, from the asset manager. And just like that, we have our sequence with the shots that are pulled in dynamically for us. So now we specifically wanted these shots to come in. These are the shots that I've uh, been working on and I want to go ahead and uh, have a look at them so I can go in now, see everything play back nicely and also have context from one shot to the next, to the next, to the next, and also view my progression. In other words, uh, if I have multiple versions for this particular shot, I can go in and I can get those versions in here as well. I can go under my versions and scan for versions and then pull in. There's three more versions inside of here. Then now I can alt up to jump to the next versions or use that V contextual menu uh, to get to them. So now as an artist, uh, to be able to have this alongside of the application that I'm working with, so I can quickly see these image sequences, uh, see all the versions, uh, see that in context to the actual sequence and the edit, uh, this makes a huge difference because before I submit them uh, for the review session, I can go in, play everything back to back, make any additional uh, adjustments to them, or at least be prepared for the review session. So another example of how we can integrate uh, the asset manager inside of the app, the timeline applications and really be pushing data and pulling about it back and forth. So that's about all the time that we have for this webinar. We've really hit on those key features uh, that we're going to be using to streamline the review session. You want to utilize all these tools and make sure they're a part uh, of your day to day workflow. So thank you for watching. Thank you.